Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our Start and Endurance webinar. My name is Emma Bayliss, and I look after equine and competitions at RDA National Office. Joining me tonight on the panel, we have Jilly Roper, who's our new endurance lead, and Lucy Wake, who's a project coordinator at National Office. Lucy has previously looked after endurance as an activity, so she has far more knowledge than me, so she'll be able to answer your questions. Jilly is going to introduce herself, so you can put a face to the name and tell you a little bit about her endurance background and experience. I've then got a few frequently asked questions to put to her, which will hopefully answer any queries that you may have. We'll be sharing our screen at this point to show you where the relevant information is on the MyIDA website. Lucy is then going to chat to you about the Endurance League, which is great timing as it's Endurance Week this week. If you've got any questions at all, please pop them in the Q&A box and we'll get through as many as we can during this session. As always, our webinars are recorded and they will appear on the My RDA YouTube in the next few days. So, Julie, I'm going to hand over to you and let me know when you're ready for all the questions. OK, thank you very much, Emma. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Julie Roper. I'd like to introduce myself to you as the recently appointed um, endurance lead. Uh, quite a lot of you might know me already because I've been around in RDA for a very long time uh, in various positions. Um, so you name it, I've probably done it at some time or another. Um, but I was very excited when the idea of um, endurance was introduced to RDA as I'd competed in endurance myself back in the dark ages, I think it probably must have been when endurance GB didn't exist and long distance riding well, was a member group of the British Horse Society. Um, but my home RDA group that I was working with them um, was one of the first five or six to register uh, for endurance in 2012 and we ran our first mini event in 2013 with I think three or four groups from um, the, the other elsewhere in the southeast joining in with us. Um, so I knew the potential for endurance riding which I'm aware may not be the best name as it has had such a bad press in recent years and some people much prefer the Irish equivalent which is a long distance group still. Um, Anyway, we used to run as a group a pleasure ride and we included some disabled riders each year and I realised how much they got out of it. So it was very exciting really that um, we were able to sort of extend this to all in RDA and it is in fact available to nearly, nearly all riders. Um, I did ride myself and I've recently also ridden the Pennine Bride away but I don't do anything competitive anymore because I'm far too old. But um, I still enjoy it and my love of the great outdoors really. I hope as many people can do RDA endurance because the biggest advantage obviously at the moment is that it's outdoors mostly. We talk about arenas later because that is a possibility but the, the best place to ride a horse is outdoors. Although we do have riders that don't come particularly well equipped to ride outdoors but as long as they know they're going to be and they are well prepared most of them actually enjoy it some of them have never been really allowed to go out in the rain or anything else but are absolutely fine and someone with some severe medical difficulty that it's not appropriate for you wouldn't do it but um, for many they just want to do everything that they can and that that is normal at the moment we have I think it's 110 groups registered for RDA and my great aim would be to see if we can get 100 more um, and, and just so certain any more people can, can feel the benefit. So we, we need to spread the word and we need everybody to go on enjoying it and we need to talk about what the benefits are and how everybody can get the best of it. Um, the Endurance League, which Lucy's going to talk about, is a very popular sort of starting point with an RDA and people that don't have any sort of competitive intentions really, but just want to do the riding, that is a really good place for them to start. Um, so um, I think we've got a lot of questions that we're expecting. Um, RDA endurance is available for riding for carriage driving and now very recently we've also been able to include mechanical horse so that's quite important at the moment because especially during lockdown um, quite a lot of groups have lost ponies quite a lot of riders have put on weight and so it's actually giving an opportunity to people who who can ride who couldn't otherwise ride but who can take part and they can still increase their distances they can increase their fitness by riding and better still they can get some rosettes and certificates and have something to show for it so 
an awful lot to like about endurance and hopefully um, we're all here to help you and anybody that's not currently doing it who wants help and advice, uh, that's what we're all here for. So if I um, now perhaps ask Lucy to talk about the, uh, the league and we'll start answering some questions. Thank you. Julie, would you mind if I just asked you a few questions first and we can work our way through and then- Yes, that's absolutely fine. That okay. We'll do it that way, yep. Rightio, so the first question that a lot of people ask when they sort of think about starting endurance in their group is, can all RDA groups do endurance? Yes, all RDA groups can do endurance. It's very simple to join in. It's really a matter of filling in a form which has to be signed by two group trustees, by the group coach, and I think it's a county coach as well. Um, but there's there's nothing else to the process because really endurance is riding and the groups are doing that anyway. Endurance sessions can be run by any group coach. Um, and yes, easy to join, easy to do. And something as well that's worth mentioning that um, if you're a carriage driving group as well, you can also include endurance yes, as part of your activities. Too. Yep. So if a group thinks about including endurance within their activities, what's the first thing they would need to do? Well, I think they have to decide that they've, they've got the right facilities to do it. It might be if they're looking at very low levels uh, or very short distances that they might be able to do that inside an arena, particularly if they can make their arena look quite interesting with some a gate or some cones or pot plants or something being trees just to make it a bit more interesting um, because a one kilometer ride is roughly eight circuits of a 20 by 40 arena. It depends how much you cut the corners off, but you can measure distances on phone apps and all the rest of it. So no, you're getting it absolutely right. Um, but outdoors is really a, where endurance really belongs. Well, outdoor arena is good though sometimes because you get the fresh air and the wind in your face and, and those things, but that's not, stopping people who only have an indoor arena at the shorter distances it's it's fine and it's good fantastic so what sort of distances can people expect to get certificates for within rda uh, they can get certificates at one two three five ten and fifteen kilometers and that's for and carriage driving and riding carriage driving is the same yes okay and if People want to learn how to take the horse's heart rate and how to trot them up properly. Where can they have a look for that? They can have a look at that for that on the website of the RDA national website in the equine section. And I think we're going to put a link um, onto, uh, onto the endurance uh, section of the website. And for those that want to find it, if you go to my RDA and then go to coaching and then go to endurance, um, that's how you find it for, for riding and the carriage driving, you go to my RDA carriage driving and you find endurance on the carriage driving section. That's fantastic. Thank you. These um, these videos were created uh, with myself and our ex RDA Henri Vet, Natalie Cole. We've got quite a list there how you can take horses temperature, respiratory rate and so on. It does Excellent. include the heart rate and a trot up as well. We've that's, got those that's brilliant. I mean, all those things are really useful and any of the any of the coaches who've gone through the new system um, with the, the modular system, they will have covered those things in their horse care, um, in the horse, horse knowledge and care section, and, and those are there. But of course, and at, when you begin endurance, you'll, uh, you don't have to have a vet to take heart rates. It's something that you're able to do and should be able to do yourselves. It's only at the sort of slightly higher competitive levels and that you have to have somebody official to take heart rates. But as a cautionary tale with this, because we had a mini competition and we had one or two ponies that were rather overweight um, and nobody with a stethoscope could find a heart. But pony was obviously extremely well and very happy and enjoying being there, but definitely no one could find a heart rate with a stethoscope. <laughs> So Another good point there for equine welfare. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't. Equine welfare, I think, was a bit lacking for this particular one who obviously had far too much spring grass that year. So, so um, if yeah. people want to do um, endurance, can they have leaders and sidewalkers? Yes, they can. It's like any other RDA session. They can have leaders and sidewalkers. 
they have to be leaders on foot, even at the longer distances. You're not allowed to lead from another horse because of the safety aspect, because there have been accidents and um, you know, very bad accidents when, when that's happened. Um, not in RDA, but just from experience of leading from another horse. So yes, they can, they have leaders, they have sidewalkers, anything more than about a kilometer, they have to be reasonably fit. Um, and particularly if those riders are going to trot. The first time I ran a, a mini competition, had some fairly competitive riders who wanted to make the speed on the certificate um, and rear were told that they had to trot to do it, perfectly able to trot. Well, nearly killed the helpers, I think. So um, we have to be a bit careful about that as well. But the, the children had a wonderful time and the ponies enjoyed it. And the kelpers came back saying sort of oxygen and water, please. So um, we have to be careful of what we're asking our volunteers to do. But one good thing about endurance is that it's it's great fun for the volunteers. It involves them a bit more because there are heart rates to take. There are There is a sort of tack check, which we need to do, even when we're doing it within a group, because it's part of the process. So it's, it's very good involvement for the volunteers. Um, and I think... I don't know any actually who haven't enjoyed it, even the ones I made run more than they wanted to. Certainly a good keep fit class, isn't it? Apart it was, yes, it was a bit like that. So if our participants love RDA endurance and they want to progress a bit more past that point, where could they look to be able to when, do that? When uh, RDA's competitive endurance, where riders have built up to being able to ride to that level and at the appropriate speeds, so they are able to trot, um, and they are able to, to, well, with some help probably, to, to work out the speed that they need on the distance they're doing. Um, up to 15 kilometres is covered by RDA competition. Um, beyond that, um, RDA riders are invited to join, I understand free of charge, um, EGB, Endurance GB, and the equivalent in Scotland is CERC. I don't know if they offer free of charge and I don't know about Northern Ireland but both have their own um, their own organizations um, Scottish Endurance Riding Club I think is CERC but I can't remember the name of the Northern Ireland one um, so yes they can progress there and they don't have to ride at a minimum speed uh, able-bodied endurance riders uh, as they progress up the levels have a, a rising um, a minimum speed that they have to meet and they have to be within within a minimum and a maximum speed for their, which is part of the skill of endurance riding. And it's something our riders can learn while they're sort of increasing their distances um, and working out that in the same time, if the pony goes faster, they can uh, do a greater distance. So I think it's good from an equine welfare point of view, from everything you've said as well, with participants learning about heart rate and sound horses. Yes, it's it looking is after them while they're doing their rides. And there, yeah, there are other things. It's about getting the ponies or horses to drink, particularly if it's hot day. We were very aware of that at the championships when we had um, a small event a couple of years ago now, of course, um, that it was quite a hot day and we wanted to be sure that the the ponies had plenty to drink, although the distances weren't long. And but it was the it was really to teach the riders, and in some cases to teach the volunteers that it needed to happen. A bit like athletes, a long distance athletes have to stop, have to drink as they go along. So do horses. So it's not it's not wrong for horses to drink in the course of an endurance ride. They are expected to do so, and you have to train them sometimes if you do it uh, to drink from puddles and. <laughs> you can lead a horse to water and all that yes you can and they never do mine never would he was <laughs> hopeless <laughs> that's brilliant thank you julie so we're going to hand over to lucy now and lucy's going to chat to you about the endurance league that she very cleverly created thanks Luce. thanks emma um i hope everyone doesn't mind but i'm going to share some pictures along with um me talking about the endurance league um so just bear with me that might oh no it's worked straight away that makes a change with technology. Um, so yeah, um, so I joined RDA in 2018 um, and one of my main discipline um, activities was endurance. Um, I have to admit, I had very limited endurance knowledge when I joined um, and there wasn't very much, we weren't very aware of how much endurance was actually being done. Um, and so, it was kind of my task to try and find out, try and get that feedback from groups. 
Um, so I did a lot of homework and research and looking at what existed. And I saw that we had the accumulative um, certificates um, and there was um, time cards um, on the website. But within about eight months, I'd never seen one being sent in to me. Um, I knew a few certificates were were handed out through group support. Um, so I, I needed to come up with something so we could see what was going on at group level. Um, so that's where the um, Endurance League um, idea came from. At the time, we had a committee with um, the lovely Sally Hall and Jilly and a few other members, and um, they were really keen to get started and they just let me run with it. So, <clears throat> so the idea of the um, Endurance League was it was non-competitive. Um, the riders were um, all put into a league together. They weren't to compete against each other, just themselves on their own ability. Um, to qualify into the league, all they'd have to do is complete a one kilometre ride. And if they only ever wanted to do one kilometre each time they ride, um, or if that's all they ever had time for, then that was fine. Because each time the, um, the time card was sent in to me, they'd have an additional one kilometre added on. Um, it also solved that issue of those that didn't want to compete at the championships or they couldn't get to the championships, that sort of thing. They still had the opportunity of, you know, doing something for themselves um, and getting that rosette. Um, so we came up with the idea that once a rider got to five kilometres, they would get their own endurance league certificate um, again at 10 kilometres. And as the um, the endurance league grew in popularity we realized that actually 25 kilometer was actually an achievable goal for some riders so again we had those rosettes made up for those riders um, so in the picture um, you can see on the left hand side this is actually park lane stables um, who were they they had a lot of riders taking part in this league and they absolutely adored it along with all the other groups um, so on the left hand side they're taking the heart rate with a stethoscope um, and then on the right hand side, they are riding um, in Bushy Park there. Um, and I think that's Natalie's um, Woody on board um, with the most fantastic smile. And I think we've used that picture a few times. So you've, you've probably seen that one before. Um, and then here we have Leatherhead. Um, again, they had a school group. I think it was a primary school group come in once a week um, and they would hack out um, and send in their certificates and they actually really, really enjoyed it too. They had many riders taking part. Um, so a little bit more about how the league actually works. It runs through the endurance season, um, which is March the 1st to the 31st of October. Um, as I said before, one kilometer qualifies any rider onto the league and there on after um, we would add them on in half kilometer, um, in half kilometers. So if a rider only managed half a kilometre one time, that would still qualify onto their, onto their cumulative amount. Um, so each time each rider got to five kilometres, they'd be sent out a rosette from me at head office, or it would now be um, the lovely Emma. Um, and then at the end of the league, um, no matter distance, whether it's one kilometre, two kilometres or 20 kilometres, um, they would all get a recognition of um, success. They get a certificate um, with their final um, distance on there, congratulating them on their achievements. Um, along with um, the Endurance League, we would pop the, the results onto the website. Um, so if you um, go to my RDA um, and then click onto the Endurance page, um, you would see at the top um, the latest um, league um, results. I say results even because it's probably the best way to describe it, even though it's non-competitive, um, the, the riders would be listed in the amount of um, kilometres they have managed. Um, and that proved to be a brilliant success. Um, just the riders to see their names up there. Um, we would share it onto the Endurance Facebook page um, and then they, they could see their name and they could share it with their friends, with their family. They could say, look, there I am. Um, probably for the first time, perhaps ever. Um, and that really spurred them on to do more and to, you know, next time they ride, they get another two kilometres or another half a kilometre and to see it add up each week or each month, however often they manage to ride. Um, it really was heartwarming to see the comments, to see the pictures coming through. Um, so there's a picture of the, um, the rosettes that they get. 
Um, so the lovely RDA colours and then with endurance um, on the side and the distance they'd gained. Um, so as you can imagine, um, I love the Endurance League. I think it's brilliant. Um, and I think with over 300 um, entries in its first year kind of proves just how many people were benefiting from having the Endurance League. Um, we had people who only attained one kilometer and that's absolutely fine. And then we had um, other riders who I think the maximum was 92 kilometers in that season time, which is absolutely brilliant. But I must stress that that's not, you know, we don't want all riders to gain that distance. It's purely on their, you know, their ability to ride, how often they can ride, that sort of thing. Um, so if you only manage three kilometres in that season, that's that's brilliant. We think that's wonderful too. Um, as Julie mentioned, um, we, we have Endurance Week which is actually coincidentally this week. Um, so every year in May, we have Endurance Week. Um, in a usual circumstance, an usual year without COVID, we would normally um, be kind of banging on about this all the time and getting as many groups involved as we can. We understand obviously that that's not possible this year or last year, um, but here's a brilliant picture. I think it's been used quite often as well, but it's such a fantastic picture um, and we, got as many groups as we could involved with that. Um, and I think the next picture, we have a lovely picture from Riverside. So we asked the groups mm -hmm. endurance week to get out there, get into the woods, get in, you know, into the school, take pictures, enjoy yourselves and show us that you're enjoying yourselves. And um, I think this, this picture is brilliant because it just shows all the different riders enjoying themselves in the different scenes set there. And then finally, the RDA championships. So um, I think Julie mentioned that a couple of years ago, we had a trial um, run. So it was just a have a go setting. I think we ran over one and possibly two kilometers yeah. of the first year. And we just had a trial run of 10 riders. Um, all 10 riders came. And um, I can't remember this gentleman's name. I think his name is Peter. And he made me well up because he enjoyed himself so much. It was the best thing ever um, to him um, and to us to see him enjoying himself. The pony enjoyed itself to have a little hack around away from the competition environment of the championships um, around the fields and back again. He got his water bottle and his um, his commend, commended um, rosette. Um, we still had it in competition format, so we still had the trot up. We had the vet check. We had um, the heart rates being taken. So the riders and the horses got used to what they should expect at a at an endurance ride um, we were very kindly sponsored um, by talk um, they have a lot of involvement with endurance gb um, and they very kindly sponsored us on the first year and again on the second year um, they noticed how well the endurance league was running so they wanted to get involved again um, so they kindly gave us some rosettes and a little water bottle for the riders um, I think that's about everything um, and I really hope that the championships will be back next time. Um, I think we are hoping to run it as a competition, but obviously um, that's just one of those things we'll have to have to see how it goes. But um, yeah, the hope is to have it there at the championships. Thank you very much, Lucy. Um, and just to add to that as well, we have decided this year because of COVID and groups being slower perhaps to open, some more so than others, we have agreed to have the Endurance League run over 12 months, just so if groups aren't starting for a little bit later, they get a chance to clock up those miles. So if you're a carriage driving group or a riding group or you're getting on your mechanical horse, join in with IDA Endurance, clock up your miles, email your time card to me or you can send it by the post and I can get you on the league then. I'm going to put a league update on the website at some point. So as the time cards start coming in, then have a look on the website and look out for your name. We've also got um, an IDA Endurance Facebook page as well. So if you're out and about doing your rides and take pictures, share your stories with us. And it's just really great for us and for other groups as well to see how you're getting on. And hopefully it will encourage other groups to sign up as well. I think now Julie's put us a target of 200 groups. <laughs> We're aim to do that by the end of this year. So wish us luck with that one. If anybody's got any questions at all, um, you can email them to me. My email address is ebaylis at rda.org. UK. Um, and either myself, Lucy or Julie will be able to answer your question and get back to you. 
this uh, webinar tonight will be on the my rda youtube channel so if you want to refer to it at all for any notes or get anyone else to have a look and encourage them to sign up then then please do have a look but thank you lucy and julia you've been fantastic panelists have a good night and we'll speak to you soon thank you thank you, thank you.